You got me still kerblogging day and night. Ba -ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba -ba. You got me still kerblogging day and night. I blinked and it's June. How the fuck are we like halfway through 2016 almost already? Hi, welcome back. <laughs> uh, I hope you all enjoyed our two uh, themed months in a row. We're back again with just normal whatever I feel like Kerblod topics. Um, there's a few that I wanted to jump right into, but I'm doing this one this weekend to buy a little bit of time for uh, certain guests that I'd like to be joining me for those. Um, but this, this particular topic is one that, um, uh, like as are often the case, Ones that I've been sitting on for a very long time, but this is actually one that I came up with uh, not only on my own, but I think like pretty close to when I started doing curb blogs, uh, which is kind of ironic, uh, which I'll, I'll get into that's why that is uh, in a little bit here. Um, it's something that's come up relevantly, uh, relatively recent, and it's, it's a relevant topic in terms of uh, that like I've been thinking about it a lot more. Uh, both in just like conversations with, with some personal friends of mine and also kind of off the heels of uh, talking about my, my thoughts on the X-Men Apocalypse movie, uh, which I won't be spoiling talking anything much about in this one, but I'll, I'll, if you, if, in case you're interested, if you missed it, and if you want to hear my thoughts on the movie, uh, then I'll have an annotation to that at some point. And, and funnily enough, this is also kind of relevant to uh, one of the crib I did just before the two theme months about uh, responding to criticism and, and like, um, you know, responsibility of what you make and everything. Um, this particular topic is about our uh, our tastes uh, and you know how we what 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 we enjoy and consume you know just as viewers and and, and people uh, can impact how others perceive us describing why we like something so much as opposed to just considering it a guilty pleasure. Um, interestingly enough, uh, and this is the ironic thing about how this is one of the early Kerblot topics I came up with like way a long time ago. Uh, for those of you who don't remember, a long time ago, uh, I, you know, because it's been quite a long time already since I started doing stuff online here with all my animation shit, uh, I used to be big into blogging, but I was doing text blogs on like, you know, my, on my Newgrounds account and DeviantArt and the blog spot on my website and shit like that. And then when curb blogs came up, I realized they just kind of like replaced the need for that. So I, you know, hence why I haven't done anything like that in a very long time. Um, but either way, um, yeah, this was something that I actually talked about on a really old blog I wrote in, in 2008 that I uh, did a quick search of. And my God, it's, it's mildly embarrassing, but I, I feel like it's still relevant to this topic at hand. I was, uh, probably a bit of a different person at the time that I wrote this, but I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, go through a little bit of it real quick to kind of set up the, uh, the, the general idea of the topic and everything. Cause I think it, it still, um, you know, has to do with the, the overall idea of it. Um, basically I had just rewatched a bunch of, uh, TTA, uh, episodes like TV Tome Adventures, which, you know, those of you who also haven't seen that, and I certainly hope you haven't, it was the old version of my Tome series, and it was all done with, like, sprites and basically no voice acting and no, uh, you know, uh, like, real animation. It was all just with, like, pre-existing graphics edited to look like the characters, and it was, it was like a massive text, like, visual novel type thing or whatever, more or less. But I, I'd gone back and I'd watched, this is, like, end of 2008 or so, uh, I'd gone back and watched a bunch of episodes, and uh, and then I decided I wanted to ask uh, people like on my my DeviantArt and like other places like hey what did you people who who watched TTA you people uh, think of the series and why did you enjoy it and um, the, the this is this was on an, an earlier post than that I was I was curious for people's opinions and um, the general kind of response I got was oh well we are fully aware that it is you know unoriginal in terms of it's all built off of you know graphics and sound that are you know don't belong to your to, to you that you didn't create but they're using it and edited to be in a context of a story that you made with characters that you created and that's what it is that we enjoyed uh, even though obviously tta had a very very niche audience even compared to tome which is pretty niche in and of itself not that i don't love you all of course um but uh so, so with, with that kind of in mind and, and learning that my question was uh, to kind of the people on Newgrounds at the time do you think what you personally enjoy defines who you are as a person? I.e., if you're genuinely into something that is, you know, declared generally by the public as being stupid, does that make you stupid? And I, you know, obviously that's pretty exaggerated, but that was the the idea of it. And I I used uh, Dragon Ball Z and Inuyasha, funnily enough, you know, which I've also talked about recently on these uh, as examples of say like if you don't consider something like oh no this is a guilty pleasure I don't really you know I like this but I know it's awful uh, you know and if people with supposedly better taste can declare those things as like not real art and then you're just a, 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 a plebe for for liking those things in the first place. The other thing uh, I used examples 
of uh, like well-known artists like what if you know uh, the, the the two creators of avatar we know that they're big into miyazaki films and gainax animation stuff what if they liked something like naruto you know does that say anything bad about them necessarily what if like you know big indie animation artists like bill plimpton or don hertzfeld like stuff like uh like Family Guy or Robot Chicken, you know, the, the, the supposedly lowest common denominator type shit on Adult Swim that people rag on a lot. Uh, and then I think the most, like, uh, you know, tongue-in-cheek example I used was, like, what if Richard Williams like, was, like, the, like, heralded by a lot of people as, like, one of the greatest animators of all time, and he, he is. Um, you know, what if he liked something as stupid as, like, Epic Movie or whatever? I, again, obviously not meant to be taken seriously, just, you know, I'm using as extreme examples. Uh, and then what I ended with, and I'll just directly quote this from the end of the, the, the post. This is 2008 me talking. With this issue that's crossed my mind, take note that it's more about liking things I'm speaking of as opposed to people hating things. But the hate side of things uh, comes more into play when people are berated and embarrassed for liking something that other people, even a vast majority of people in some cases, don't think is artistic, original, credible, or even simply good at all. Hell, in elementary and middle school, liking Pokemon for more than the year it came out was practically considered a crime, it seemed like. This issue didn't, doesn't even, nor should it, specifically apply to kids or dumb people or anything as unfair and closed-minded as that. What are your thoughts? Now, I got a whole bunch of different responses to this. Um, some willing to discuss, some people who were not so willing to, you know, I guess, get into it without being, you know, snarky and mean-spirited. This was new grounds at the time, of course. And also, th this was... The era of like you know brawl taunts had come out by that point, and like you know I was a I was a relatively looked down upon figure in that community at the time. So maybe even to that point, I, I probably the the reason I even made the blog post is because I wanted to like show like that I could be self aware to you know some of the artists that I wanted to be respected by, which then I later realized you know didn't fucking matter to me anyway in, in the long run. Rather it, rather it didn't matter in the long run it did matter to me at that time but but now i look back on it it's like who fucking cares um but that said yeah th that, that's kind of where it started and the more recent discussions that i've had with friends is i've talked about this as if it's like a fear uh, a fear that i have of having bad taste like genuinely in in the way of like of you know i'm okay actually no i remember i remember exactly what it was and it's funny because i used it as an example in that blog post uh inuyasha when I did Anime April, I, re I, I watched, like, all of Inuyasha, the final act, because I just got, like, re-sucked back into it, and I really, really liked it for what it was. Now, I talked about this a lot in the Inuyasha Kerr blog, so I won't spout too much information over and over again, but, you know, I was able to sit there and define what it was about Inuyasha that I thought was good, why I felt it was deserving of, you know, the, the fan base that it had, and why it is that I personally enjoyed it. I'm also... You know, I was able to to put exactly what it is about it that I get why so many people have a hate boner for that that series, uh, and I you know can't really refute that. And I think that that's what it is now is that for the most part, when it, when it terms to let when it, when it comes to um, like you know media that I'm into that that I'm a consumer of, uh, I think that that I've reached a point where it's like I can make peace with yes, uh, I genuinely like this and i don't consider it a guilty pleasure but i also can acknowledge what it is that's bad about it like for example you know all of you guys know by the vast amount of curb law topics i've done for this series you know by the fact that there's a whole fucking playlist for it is i love dragon ball z i think dragon ball z is a wonderful amazing series and i'm fully invested into it i know a shit ton about it i could talk about it for fucking days on end and everybody who knows me knows that I'm also able to objectively look at Dragon Ball Z and say, okay, this is also, even though it's, it's the inspiration for a lot of other series that came you know, after it, and, I, and therefore it's earned its place in history, uh, I can objectively say, hey, but something like One Piece is better than Dragon Ball Z. Uh, you know, even though I probably like Dragon Ball Z more, like just a little bit more than One Piece. I love them both dearly, of course, but... Um, but, I, but Dragon Ball Z is something that I'm, I'm much more like invested into constantly ever since I got into it as a kid and still am now, uh, you know, basically to, to the same degree, more or less. Uh, and, but, and, and not that I'm not with One Piece, but that's what I mean is like, it's, it's funny because now I'm also kind of tying this into the anime April, you know, month as, as much as it is with uh, uh, Marvel in a way. Uh, where, um, you know, I, I can still say, okay, but Dragon Ball Z is not the greatest thing ever. It has plenty of flaws that I cannot like, you know, rag on people, even people who know it and have seen it and really, 
like gave it a proper shot and have seen like the entire thing, they can look back on it and go, no, there's better, there's better shonen series than this. There's better anime than this, etc. Now, over on the note of the Apocalypse movie, you know, like I was kind of saying in the Curb Law, I felt like kind of an idiot for when we walked out of that movie and I really, really enjoyed it. And, you know, I was hearing all of the complaints and, I, and I've heard more complaints I listened to. There was a podcast on uh, Channel Awesome that recently talked about the movie where like Doug and a bunch of other folks shared their, their thoughts on, on the film and everything and all totally valid points. And I get that. And I was able to rationalize for the most part, like what it is about that experience that I really enjoyed and why like I felt like I was watching a real X-Men where the whole cast of characters were all together and they felt like they were doing X-Men things and it was like a, it was the closest to like the cartoons and the comics and shit I've seen that that, that I felt that kind of experience from of all of the movies that I watched so far even though I was able to acknowledge First Class and Days of Future Past are better films but this was a great X-Men movie nonetheless and I still stack it up there with, you know, with that three, you know, th those three movies starring, you know, Fassbender and McAvoy and, and everything. Um, now, the difference here and, and kind of what I'm talking about with this is how people perceive you with it. Um, now, my, my kind of perspective on this is a little different because it's not just me as a person. It's also myself as a creator because as it's very obvious, you know, the stuff that I'm into very, very highly influences. I mean, even just the stuff I've talked about here a second ago, One Piece, Dragon Ball, Inuyasha, X-Men, you know, just as a couple of examples, all of that stuff influences the stuff that I make, whether it's something like Tome that like is a real story that I put all this time and effort and like thought into and everything, or even just something as like offhandedly stupid as like a parody rangers you know video or whatever you know stuff like that um but but those are the things that influence me those are those are what you know are fancy to my tastes i guess you could say and um you know obviously the the the, the basic kind of answer to this is like well different strokes for different folks people are into what they're into some people like or don't like action stuff or like or don't like fantasy, you know, horror, you know, some people aren't into gore, uh, you know, when it, when it comes to like scary movies, some people are totally into like, you know, the most over the top crazy shit, whether it's like violence in, in something like, like a horror movie or like, you know, like, like a superhero movie that gets super dark or, you know, maybe some people like things a little bit more lighthearted or cartoony or whatever, you know, and obviously people also have their palettes of, you know, the, the different, you know, hues of gray with, within each of those things when it comes to their entertainment. Um, but obviously, you know, it, it comes down to like, oh, like, am I, should I be embarrassed? Should I feel stupid for liking this, you know, because everybody else I know doesn't, um, you know, and then also that kind of even gets into the whole, like, you know, the geekdom, the outsider of like, oh, you know, am I weird for being in my twenties and liking cartoons? No. Uh, and granted, obviously, that stuff has changed as our culture has shifted and changed a lot, too, uh, to now a lot of those things have become more acceptable. And then, you know, you can get into the argument of, like, oh, well, what even is a geek anymore if now that, you know, that kind of stuff has become part of pop culture and just general mainstream media in and of itself? Um, you know, but, but even then, it's like, like, okay, superhero, comic book stuff like that, you know, that used to be something that was considered, like, nerdy or whatever and, like, not necessarily unintelligent, but just, like, that particular sect and you know, people were judged for that. And then, you know, now because of comic book movies, uh, you know, especially with stuff with the MCU and the X-Men movies and stuff like that and the Spider-Man movies, now that's become part of the mainstream. And now, like, liking the superhero genre, uh, you know, if I guess if you can call that a genre in a way, um, because even then it's kind of subsected further. But, um, you know, people, uh, people like and don't like that, but it's generally become more accepted. But regardless of how much something is, is accepted, I think it has to do with, like, you know, if you're in, like, a group of people and you don't want to feel like the dumb one for liking the thing that everybody else hates, especially if you don't think that it is, it is a guilty pleasure. Like, if you're into such and such thing, everybody else is like, really? You like that? Like, how, how is that possible? You know, kind of thing. Even, even um, past, like, media, uh, like, even... Um, like like performances like I get into conversations where like for instance I'll be like oh man like I actually really like the work of such and such and then some other person who is you know in in some ways more critical than I am will be like oh really like I thought that they were super flat or whatever and then that same person will be like oh I really liked this person's performance in this thing and then I'm like Wait, really they sound, they sound so fake they sound like they're wording you know reading words off a piece of paper and like being way too over the top or obnoxious blah 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 you know, like then, then it just becomes subjective and then you don't really know.
but it, it becomes a problem when it's like peer pressure and you're surrounded by people that all have this same kind of general opinion and you don't want to feel embarrassed for like really, really genuinely liking whatever it is that you liked. When it comes to being an artist too, the other thing that you have to consider and, you know, I can use myself as an example, but, I mean, obviously you guys know my whole fucking tragic backstory with my, you know, my history on Newgrounds and everything. And, you know, I never quite fit in with, like, what everybody else was doing. Even when I tried to literally do that, it ended up blowing up in my face more than anything. So, you know, which kind of then resulted into, okay, well, then I'm going to do what I want to do, which led to stuff like Tome. And, and even with Tome, I mean, like, you know, because that does not fit in at all. And, it, you know, it's up to everybody who's into it to decide, hey, this is, is this good or not? To which I'm always, as I often, often say, I'm very thankful to anybody who was into it and appreciated it for what it was. But that's kind of what I mean is like, I even look at Tome obje you know, objectively and I'm like, is this any good? I don't know. Like, that's not up for me to determine. And this is influenced by all the things that, that were built from my personal tastes. You know, other media that other people, other creators, you know, several of which I, I know about and look up to, you know, as storytellers that I try to, you know, take a lot of nods from what they have done and, you know, apply what I've learned from those experiences into my own self-expression. And, you know, again, to the, the, the real answer is like, you know, whatever you want to do, you know, to anybody out there who is an artist of any kind, you know, whether you're an actor or an artist or a writer or whatever, uh, like someone who draws an animation, whatever, anything, music, uh, you know, it's the same kind of thing that applies. It's like, you know, you're influenced by what you're influenced by, by whatever it is that you were, you know, taken aback by and, and enjoyed and when, what you want to apply to your own work. And then, uh, but uh, I think it also applies to when you want to push yourself to do better and get to the next level of quality. And, you know, what can hold you back is if, say, you know, your tastes are either like poor in what it is that you choose to, you know, consume and, and, and what you find good, uh, you know, because if, if, if say, you know, you are studying something that are bad examples of, you know, how to do storytelling, of how to develop characters, of how to visually present something, how to, you know, audibly present something, etc., then, you know, th because there are ways to study things and learn the wrong way from stuff. I mean, you know, the, one of the easiest examples of handling, I think a lot of people know this, the how to draw manga books are pretty infamous, are, are infamously, you know, unhelpful with, you know, how to learn how to draw. Uh, I think like even even people who aren't artists have probably heard the kind of you know jokey things about that, and it's you know it's totally true, and and you know that's sad to say, but just that's kind of how it goes. Um, but yeah, I think uh, I I think that that that's something that that is where you have to like you have to step away from yourself and be objective with you know okay if you want to if you want to be a more well-rounded human being. Uh, you know, which is also part of the reason why I say, for instance, I'm also watching more films, like like live action movies, and not just animated shows, and not just the same kind of genre over and over. I'm I'm trying to expand my taste, much like even, uh, you know, in the literal sense of taste. Why, you know, trying lots of different foods is important. I used to be a super fucking picky eater, and now moving to California has expanded upon, uh, you know, my palate of eating shit. Uh, not literal shit, hopefully, but but then again, who knows? Maybe I, I'm eating shit. Uh, not fi figurative shit, not literal shit. This is going in a very weird direction. Sorry. Anyway, my point, <laughs> my point is, it's going to be the fucking top comment. Is like, oh, so you eat shit. Is that what you're saying, Chris? 25,000 likes. Thank you. Good. Anyway, um, I think being objective in what it is that you like. So you can, because then you can genuinely enjoy aspects of things and not the whole of something. You know, if, 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 it, if it's not, because nothing is perfect in a way. You know, like, like no, no consumable media, no, no, anything is perfect in this world. So, but, but appreciating things for what they are, taking something positive away from it that you, you know, that, that, that did positively influence you. And then also being aware of what the negative aspects are and what not to take away from, you know, unless you're like learning by example of like, okay, don't do that kind of thing. Cause that can also be helpful too. learning by non-example, I think is also very important. Because um, I've certainly learned lessons by proxy from other people like that, just as much as I've learned uh, lessons on what to do and what, what, what you should do. You know, learning what you shouldn't do, I think, is also just as important uh, and, and in a different kind of way. Finding that balance of objectivity, I think, can be very helpful for your development as a person, your development as a creative, you know, if, if you're an artist of some kind. And, and also with just like kind of finding just whatever your calling is of any kind. I think that 
in a way that I think in a way what it is that we're inspired by does help define us as as, as a person. Um, but it's what we do with the inspiration we get from those things that is us as people, you know. So like, if if you if you like something stupid, but you're a super genius and you you know you, that that's not you know impacting your life and and how you live it then it doesn't matter and it can be whatever it is that you want and, and fuck with it what anybody else thinks. You know, they don't even, they don't even have to know, if you, know if, if you think that, or if you don't care about how people judge you or how people see you in that way, if they, if they might, you know, the people that you surround yourself with and it doesn't fucking matter. So hopefully that made any sense. Um, yeah, this is kind of just a little bit of a stream of consciousness, this Kerr blog, but I felt I, that while I had a lot of these things rattling around in my head, it was worth bringing up. So um, I'm curious about your guys' thoughts because um, unlike the people many of the many of the people not all but many of the people who commented on my initial blog post about this shit on Newgrounds uh 8 years ago when I first brought up the subject to the internet as a whole um I'm very curious as to what all of you think about you know this in general so in the comments below tell me have you ever had any experiences where you felt like you know you were being judged that you felt stupid for liking something you know that not everybody else you knew liked or that you know the internet or society doesn't like or whatever uh, you know, in terms of like media or, or stuff like that, um, you know, can you, could you define why it is that you liked it? You know, do you think that it, it deserves a lot more than, you know, than, than it, it gets? Uh, you know, do, do you have experiences like this where you're not sure like what you should be thinking? Are you self-questioning? You know, you know, it, do you have no tastes or do you have good taste or bad taste, etc.? cetera? Uh, let me know. I'm curious for your thoughts. Tell me some stories. Uh, I want to know. Can you show me? And, you know, et cetera. We're back to the, we're, we're par for the course. We're back to the same dumb jokes again. Uh, I have some particular curb block topics coming up in the next couple weeks, along with a new cartoon that if you were at Fanime, you know what it is uh, going to be about, but don't spoil it in the comments, uh, in the comments if you know. But in the meantime, uh, if you also have future curb block topic suggestions as well, leave a comment about that or hit me up on Twitter, Tumblr, Facebook, whatever you feel like, and uh, I may very well delve into that at a later date. Hope everybody's having a wonderful beginning of their summer, and I will catch you all very soon. Bye-bye.